Alright guys, welcome back to the channel once again and today we're gonna be talking about the to-do app in the next year. So this is not just a to-do app, there is something also going on back inside. So there's a Nest.js also involved, but recently I was making one series on the Nest.js, so that is also involved into this one. So there's something going on between Nest.js and Nest.js, so that I just wanna be discuss about that. Okay? So we're gonna be looking at it. So this is just a simple to-do app right now, if you can see in my screen. So we can delete the to-dos from here and we can add to-dos, like if I add to-do and if I add one more, so that's you can have add multiple to do's over here so right now so you would be seeing side like there are two to do's are getting added like when you add something over here from the input box it should be added on the but there is one more line is getting added which is called hi how are you so this is not exactly which is uh, happening from the front side this is kind of message which is coming from the back end and that's getting added over here so it's kind of chat application when you send any message to someone and you get reply so that reply is getting added over here right now it's a static reply which i am just passing from the back end side but it can be dynamic as well if you want to do this okay so i'm just going to be showing you the process how it has done and how i have written the code but that's uh, the to do app code is re really simple so let me just open the console log and i'll show you so let's suppose if you see over here okay let me reload the page okay so you see this message is coming over here connected so this is means like it's connecting the socket to the back end like the local host 3000 is getting connected to local host 8000 which is the back end port okay the nest.js port running so if i add something over here so you're gonna see something is received so this is the form data which we have added over here into this form form field but over here if you see there's a data coming this data is coming from the back end so that's why it's getting printed over here so right now in the local it's running so that's why it's happening at the same time but in the when it will be replied somewhere so it's gonna be it's not gonna be happening at the same time it will take some while to return back the response and then it will print over here so i'm passing some events in the socket okay from the front end side like i'm just passing the event from the front end side to back end side and back end is reading that and the back end once event gets received over there so it replies something to you back okay on that so that's what i'm doing over here so let me just show you the code uh, so this is the whole process you just add something over here and then you can just keep on it's gonna keep on adding into the list and then you can delete it as well okay okay so the form should be reset so i didn't do that so we can do that as well so let's go back to the code okay so just over here come back oh you see this is my code this is the next year's code okay let me just go through with the folder structure first if you are first time on the next year's first of all if you are coming for the next year so what you have to do npx create next app okay and after that you just have to put your next app name okay whatever you want to put so let's suppose put and hit enter so it will ask you a few questions like would you like to use TypeScript? would you like to use ESLint or would you like to something blah 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 so like this and then yes 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 if i do this so it's gonna install the application into my this folder but i don't want to do that so i'm gonna just hit enter and close it okay so these questions it's gonna ask and these dependencies it's gonna include in the default next Yes, application and once you are finished with those so it's going to create one folder structure like this and these some uh, files going to be config files going to be included over here okay let's go to the routing part now so if you see over here there's a source, uh, source folder inside that folder you can create multiple folders like util common constants and components and all the things you can create but over here you see app folder inside that app folder your all the routing going to be running so inside the app folder there is a default page which is called page.tsx so this is the page.tsx and if i show you on the browser how it looks like so if i just remove this to do this route from here and go so this is the default page from the next year's okay this is the default next year's page and if i just do editing something add it over here so let's suppose we remove all the part from here and just say hello there hello there okay so just save it and we'll save it and just go back over here in the browser so you see it's written it's printing hello there okay so this is our default route and if we go inside the to do so it's gonna load this app okay so let's go to the to do so how it's loading so let's suppose you have to create any folder or path you have to create the folder so let's suppose your path is like you want to create the path to do so you have to create one folder to do and after that inside that you have to create the page.tsx so when you will hit the to do like this one over here so it will just find the page.tsx inside your to do folder and render that one let's suppose you want to create some dynamic route okay so for the dynamic route let's suppose you have dynamic route means like let's suppose you have some id so you just 
to do slash something something id so if i hit that one you see i dynamic one which is coming because i am passing one dynamic id over here how this is happening if you go to if you go to the code and inside the code if you see over here there is a bracket page written so which means this is dynamic they would they could be any variable inside this and after that it will load the page.tsx but it will render after the to do slash id id will come into this one and after that your page.tsx gonna be load okay so you can just uh, pass the props and inside the props you can check like the param params are coming and from the params you can just load you can read the id okay so let's suppose if i pass the props over here okay and just type any for now because we can create the interface if you are writing the code then javascript so you can create the interface and okay let's go and just go into the browser and just uh, inspect it console and just hit enter so we gonna see something happening over here we are not seeing that one why is that okay sorry my bad so it gonna be printing because it's it's a kind of server side component because i haven't included the uh, use client over here so that's why printing the console on the server side but if you if i use the use client over here let's suppose uh, because there is a two kind of components server component and the client component so the client component gonna be denoted by this one if you include use client at the top of the file okay and if you don't include anything so it's gonna be counted as the server component okay so that's all the logs everything but you're gonna write inside that it's gonna be printing on the server side not on the other front end side okay so let me just include the use client over here but we don't need to use that and i'm gonna tell you the difference as well like how what is the how we, how we can use the server component or how we can use the front end like the client component over here that there's a big benefit of it okay just save it and just go over here so you can see my params and the such params are coming so you can pull your params from here so this is the same id which is we have added over here and this value we can use like load the data or whatever you want you can do that okay so let's go back and let's talk about the server component and the client component okay what does that mean so the kind so the main difference is the server and client component let's suppose this is the use client if you include this one so it's going to be client component and if you don't include this so it's going to be server component so right now this is server component so whatever you're going to do it's going to be loaded on the server side and then it's going to be printed on the client side like the whole component will come in the response pre-designed okay so let me just show you so if i reload this if i go into the network tab and then if we look for this page so preview so you see the preview preview and the preview is coming already designed component coming okay so the whole html is already designed from the back side and then it's coming in the response so it's getting printed over here so you see the html is already designed and coming on the front end side so that's called server component okay and it loads fast it doesn't lay lags because there's no any rendering going on on the client side directly just come and print that's it okay and so go back again so this is the client and uh, server side component and the main benefit of using that one because let's suppose if we are using normally react okay normally react we are using without the next JS. so what we have to do whatever the component containers or whatever we're gonna be writing over there each and everything gonna be loaded one by one okay let's uh, you know the props drilling into the react JS. so let's suppose there is some component okay you created another component you pass that component over here like this way blah 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 okay inside that you will pass the props and then that prop component having some other child component so all are loading at the same page okay so that's going to be taking time and rendering time so it's kind of performance issue comes over there but over here your page speed is so fast let's suppose you have to use a client component like let's suppose you have a button or something where you're going to pass the event okay you're going to do something you're going to do some actions on the client side so that part only that part you can make as a client component okay and rest of the other thing which are static where the data gonna be loaded or something like that with nothing to do any action so that part you can make as a server component okay and where you have to do the actions, those part you can make as a client component. But there are some more of this other stuffs as well in the next years. You can make API routes as well, and then you have don't have to include the backend part. You just need to include, you just need to include the API routes, and then you can connect with DB and fetch the data, and you can run on like you can work on the business logic side. Okay, so that's what you can do. 
But uh, this is the whole scenario of Next.js. Yes, right now, you can use the server actions as well. Like, let's suppose you have a form. So right, right now, I have a form over here, okay? And I have to I have to pass this data directly in the backend, okay? So without using any API, without any route, nothing. So you can just create the server actions, like actions folder, and inside that, you can create the server actions and just pass this like that. So everything is already in the documentation. One by one, I'm just going to be making the, making the videos on that. So recently, I have started Next.js. Yes, so I'm just trying to post as much as I can. Okay, so I now come to the back end part like how the next Nest.js is also involved into this one. So Nest.js is only involved. Let's go to the to do app right now. So Nest.js is only involved for this web socket connection with that. Okay, when we are doing the socket connection, so whenever we are doing like any any input over here and adding it so the socket connection is happening and the data is going into the backend and then backend socket is passing one event to the client and the client is uh, client is reading that one okay so that's what happening over here right now so let's go to the code side let me just walk you through with the code so you can see we have normal to do function over here so this is the default function so whenever we're gonna load to do so this page gonna be loaded and this component gonna be loaded so i have made is that to use client because i'm not like it's not a big file and big change so just i wrote everything inside the single file and these are my few states like to do's and the input message so whatever the messages are coming from back end that gonna be added inside this one and whatever I'm writing only into the input field those gonna be added inside this one okay and we have a socket URL which I'm which is the backend URL like backend domain so with that we're gonna be connecting so this is the one okay after that uh, we have this socket connection going on over here with the URL so I'm using this library from the front inside socket io dot client socket dot io client so this is I'm using on the front end side okay and this is when we are receiving the event so we are reading the event from when the event gonna come from backend and I'm using the use effect method over here for the first time whenever your socket gonna be connected the first time so it's gonna be printing this one and this one and this one so disconnected for this one identity there is another event which called identity so I'm reading that one but there's no any point of using this one so this is what we have right now which we are reading from backend okay let's go to the logic part okay so we have uh, this function over here handle add to do's so so i'm just uh, passing it from the form submission so do you see i have over here a form i have a form over here this one's on somewhere so when i click on this one it will go over here and form data it will read the data from the form and then it will check it and then it will set that data into the to do's okay and i could have used the library or i could have used the input change but there's a one other thing of not using that one this is the method over here socket dot emit and this is passing the event so this is the event which is going to be received on the back end side and this is the message i'm passing when i'm entering anything inside my input box okay so this is passing the event and there are a few uh, functions for deleting the deleting the to do and deleting the message okay so that's how it's gonna be and let's go to our okay so we don't need these th things so i don't know how it got included but we don't need these two things okay so let's go to the back end one so if you see my this is my back end code right now this is the simple logic i have written i didn't do any like uh, code structure and all so just simply so recently i created the video so i would have shown you like we have users and update all the crud, appli crud application of this one i showed you all the crud functionality so that we have controller routes and all so which i created recently i showed you over here in the users controller over here so you saw all the controllers and everything with the postman we saw that in the last video so there's one other file i have included which is event gateway okay so what it does whenever you start your application try to connect with the url which you have provided over here so this is the localhost 3000 my front end url where the events gonna go when you will receive anything the socket connection will happen from the front end side so this is the url which we're gonna use and after that we are using some decorators over here like websocket gateway and the websocket server so it's gonna be creating the server over here okay so you'll get some few things inside this server initialization and that's how your web socket connection is getting connected in the decorator and here you have some events like events which are getting received okay so first is even another is identity okay so you see whenever i'm passing any event from the front and side okay so it's getting received over here as well all the messages we have printed over here on the front and side like this last one is a 45 45 45 t okay so this is the last one which has been uh, received over here from here and this is the static data which i am passing from the back end okay so 
let's suppose as about the chat application so there are two people who are chatting with each other talking with each other they are sending messages to each other so one message came over here automatically it will send the response back to the client side like message has been received or message is not received okay so message so it will send the response from here after that another message sent so according to the client like the chat id we're gonna send the message like we're gonna we're gonna send the message again like notification to another person because in he is into the chat and he's the receiver so always sender and receiver getting changed with each other okay one of the guys sending message so another gonna be receiver and another is sending message so first one gonna be receiver okay so this one gonna check this the logic whole logic will become over here at this place like um, the whole logic will be over here this place so sender and receiver so when sender send the message so we have to send the notification to receiver so notification will go from here automatically it will send the notification on the front end and the front end will see one pop-up or something whatever the logic implementation you have done for the notification okay so that's gonna be working so that's how sort of I'm still working on this one I'm just trying to create some more things so it's gonna be turning into the chat application but this is the beginning just I wanted to show you guys so how it's working so this is a simple code of WebSocket connection in the Nest.js and you can do some more stuff if you want to do but this is the whole process of connecting the socket let me take you to the uh, documentation as well if you go over here WebSocket gateway so you can read the whole thing so we have how the socket connection this is for installing the sockets and after that you can use it so there are multiple ways to use the socket over here and you can use it it has like given all the scenarios how you can pass the event from the front end and then how you can pass even from the back end okay so right now I'm passing from back end like this way client.emit because you can get the client and you can get the data over here so i'm just passing the client.emit event and data into it so that's how that's how the whole logic is running over here and the next year's code this is how the to-do app so i'm printing the to-do mapping the to-dos over here then first i'm mapping the input boxes like input date messages which i am entering into the input field and next i'm just printing in the same loop the messages are getting received from the back end side okay so that's how it's happening and this is my form and this is my input field and this is my button so it's like submit button so whatever you don't have to just click on the like button as well you just type something let's all type something enter and it's gonna be printed over here and later on you can delete it that's the kind of thing oh uh, and another thing I want to discuss with you what is that like why didn't I use input change over here into the front end side so let's suppose you see i have an state input change but i'm not using this problem is that like whenever i was doing the input change so it was remounting the component okay whole component was mounting again and the socket connection was happening again and again again that was the big problem so i didn't do it major thing is that whenever you do an input change or something like that make sure your your component rendering should not happen okay your component should render only once and after that whatever the changes or whatever things you are doing the component should render on only that time when your data is getting updated over there okay when you're doing any changes so that time the component should not render otherwise it's gonna make the performance problem into your client components okay okay maybe it's gonna make the API calls again and then again putting the data so that's gonna be a problem okay so this is the socket connection I did like wrote over here like this way uh, socket APIs to the backend and that's why it's not required so I use this one but we can use some lifecycle method to avoid this problem or you can use some custom hooks so I will change this code now and then we can push put this code in the custom hook and then you can use just as a hook over here socket and set socket and add that inside that all the connection thing is happening so that's how you can do it so I hope you guys you understood something from this video and this is the this is the flow gonna be going forward next year and next year, next years together and we're gonna be building one application with that which gonna be useful for your some kind of project or something and these all the codes I'm gonna be pushing on the github so this link you will find soon over there if you don't find in the description don't worry about that one you can just let me know in the comment as well I can share with you but these codes I'm just gonna be pushing over there soon and you can find this so this is gonna be very useful application but it's not gonna be stopped only for the to do app I'm gonna be building some more things with that one and you're gonna see it into this one so thank you so much guys thank you for watching and i'll meet you in the next video soon